Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and it's time for me to give you my first impressions on the Spyderco bombshell. But before I do, I just got to the spot where I'm gonna film it, and if you've watched any of my videos in this canyon before, I might have mentioned there's this creepy, like, mine shaft hole thing that goes into the side of the mountain. And the first time I ever hiked here, I was pretty sure there was a bear sleeping in it. It was so freaky. It was like a foggy day. There was no one else up here. And I was shining my light in there. And it's just this sketchy little hole in the side of the hill. You're probably not even really going to be able to see it because of these trees. I'm going to take you up there real quick. It's right up here, literally like 15 feet from me, um, maybe 30 feet. I don't know. It's right up there. And it is so freaking sketchy looking. So I'm going to show it to you. Um, it's also gotten kind of like filled in a little more the way this hillside is like caving in on it from the first time that I came up here. This appears to be pretty fresh dirt that's fallen on here. This, this hillside is kind of given away these days, but oh man. Yeah, here we go. All right. Check this out. How terrifying is that this is like the metal door that I assume used to cover it up. There's another chunk of one right there, if you can see that. But it's like, I don't know <laughs> what. I guess it was a mine? I don't know. It's freaky. Now, now that you've seen that, I'm going to show you the bombshell. All right. So, now that I've shown you the mine, this is the bombshell. If you watched my unboxing, you could probably tell I was super excited to get the bombshell. This is a model that I saw teased the first time on, I think it was like one of the SHOT Show videos that Blade HQ did, where they talked to Eric Glesser. And this was just one of the knives that was on the table that he talked about a little bit. And I'd kind of forgotten about it a little bit. There's a lot of stuff in that video. But I thought it was cool the first time I saw it, for sure. And then again, maybe like two months ago or something, somebody put in the Millie PM2 Pair 3 Facebook group a uh, question asking, like, when is that bombshell finally coming out? And I was like, what's the bombshell? I didn't remember the name of it. And then I went back, or I looked on their site, and I was like, oh, it was that one. And then I watched the video again because I wanted to see more about it. And so ever since then, I've been like holding my breath, waiting for this knife to come out. And luckily, I was able to snag one from River's Edge Cutlery, who are the best. Um, if you haven't heard me talk about River's Edge Cutlery, you don't watch my videos. They're my favorite. Anyway, they were able to get one for me. And this knife showed up the other day. It's a dangerous thing when you're so excited about a knife, at least for me, because oftentimes, too often, that leads to severe disappointment when the knife actually arrives. But I had been building this knife up in my head because I've been so excited for it. And not only because on paper, I liked the design of this knife. I thought it looked cool. I liked the materials. I like that it's coming from the Taichung factory. So much about it was going for it, but also because it's a flash batch. And call me whatever you want. I like it when there's exclusivity in a knife. It makes it more exciting to me, more fun to me. If this was a regular production knife, let me just say right now, if this was a regular production knife that I knew they were just going to make an unlimited amount and anyone could get one at any time by going on to any retailer and ordering one, I'd be less excited about it. Sue me. That's how I feel. It's exciting to feel like you're part of something and you're getting something collectible and numbered. This knife is numbered. Mine says it right back here. I'm reading it backwards, but this is number 46 of 1,250. 1,250 is kind of a lot, but it's also kind of very little. <laughs> it's like, if you're thinking about how many people are fans of Spyderco, who love Spydercos and are engaged in that community, the Milli PM2 Para 3 Club alone, some of the most devout Spyderco fanboys that I've ever met all in one place, that's like 5,500 members right now as of when I'm filming today. So, if only one-fifth of the people in the Spider Co. Club want one, that leaves less than 200 for the rest of the world. So there's a lot of people who are into Spider Co.'s, and I'm sure, I'm highly confident, especially with how much I've been seeing freak out, thinking that they missed one, and now they're watching for drops, and this knife is probably going to go very, very fast as soon as the big retailers start posting theirs that they're getting. 
as of when I'm filming this. I know that a lot of that still has yet to happen. I've been up in this mountain though for a couple hours today. It's Monday. It's possible that it's happening now. Luckily, I already have one, so I don't have to play that rat race this time. But the bombshell is a really cool knife. Not only do I like it more because it's collectible and because I got one, because I got one early, and it's just so fun and cool to me that that element of this knife exists, but also it's just purely a great knife. If I got this knife and I knew nothing about knives, or I knew nothing about the collectability of it, at least, I don't think I could imagine a world where I know nothing about knives at this point or where I'm not into knives. But imagine I enjoy knives. I appreciate knives. I'm into knives. I like Spyderco like I do, but I have no idea that this knife is exclusive and that it's a flash batch and any of that extra stuff that goes along with that. And I just get one of these and maybe it's given to me. Maybe I just happen to see it on a drop. I have no idea that I'm getting lucky and I buy one and it comes to me. And I never post a picture of it. I never make a video of it. Nothing. I sincerely think I would still really enjoy this knife. Just purely owning it. Which is a funny thing that that even needs to be said in today's day and age. But so many people buy knives. And I'm guilty of it all the time. Of buying knives that I think will look cool to have on Instagram. Because I love the Instagram knife community. I have a ton of fun with it. I love taking knife pictures. I love taking videos now for YouTube. So it's fun for me to get things that I know other people will think are exciting too. But if I got this and just put it in my pocket and used it for knife stuff, I would enjoy this knife. So there are other knives. I don't usually partake in knives like that, but there are other knives that I think are knives that are just hype, purely hype. And a lot of people are probably wondering right now, who are trying to get these, if it's hype. <laughs> and I don't think it is. I sincerely don't. I've had this knife in pocket two days in a row now, since I opened it up. And it's a lot of fun. Is this the most useful Spyderco that I have? Far from it. This knife is about the same dimensions as a pair of three. And is a pair of three better at being an EDC, EDC knife than this? Undoubtedly, yeah. If you're just looking to get a Spyderco to have and use, and you're not like a collector who has a bunch of knives, this is not the most useful Spyderco that I've ever handled. Far from it. This thing is thick, not only in the handle, but the blade stock is way thick. The, the overall shape and form and function of this knife is chunky. I call it the danger pickle. And I realized right after I shot the unboxing... <laughs> that it looked like a pickle. It's funny how it happened, actually. My daughter asked for a pickle right after I opened this knife and shot that video. And I had this in my pocket because I had just shot the unboxing. And I put it in my pocket and I go in the kitchen. My daughter asked for a pickle. And so as I was grabbing the pickle jar, I was like, oh my gosh, this is a pickle. You might remember I called the subvert the danger banana. That's the knife, or that's the name that me and my friends came up with for it because it's kind of banana shaped and it's dangerous. And so... This is the danger pickle. And I love that I call it the danger pickle. It's so much more fun to me that this knife has a nickname. That's a good time. Anyway, this knife ergonomically is kind of like holding a pickle. <laughs> it's thick and it's kind of rounded and contoured and it's green. And everything about it is very curvy and round. There aren't really any like corners on this knife aesthetically. Everything is very flowy. Even the pocket clip. Everything about it just flows and feels almost like a natural shape, like a pickle. So <laughs> to me, it's a pickle knife. If that makes you not want one, so be it. More for everyone else. But it's really fun for me that it's it's a pickle. Anyway, in pocket, it's it could be worse, but it's not the best knife in pocket. Let's be totally honest right now. This knife feels thick. It feels chunky. It feels kind of heavy but that's fine. Like not every knife that I buy has to be ultimate EDC knife. Some knives can just be a good time. And guess what? This carries great. Is it the best at carry? No, it's far from it. It wouldn't be in my top 10 carry knives, but it carries totally acceptably for how much fun I think it is. And here are the things that I love most about it because the ergos or sorry, the weight and the, the thickness in pocket is probably what I would say would be the most bothersome to people. It doesn't bother me per se. It's not like it's unacceptably heavy or thick, but it's thick and heavy. What I love most about it is what the thickness and heaviness does for it 
other than carry. Because ergonomically, this knife, to me, compared to a Para 3, is more comfortable. And I really like the Para 3 in hand. The Para 3 works great for me. This is more comfortable because everything is rounded. This G10 is so smooth. All of the corners are so rounded and contoured and and just the the attention to making this feel molten like melted in my hand i feel it they nailed it on that i've heard several people complain that taichung spider co's have really sharp edges of the hole and sharp spines a lot of the time i will admit that they are sharper than golden colorado ones a lot of the time but that it's never bothered me this one is noticeably smooth in the hole and on the spine i love it when things are smooth in the hole now nah, i mean anyway this it it's excellent it's really the fit and finish the way that this knife feels in hand with its weight with its thickness the thickness of the spine too how big of a like thumb pad place that gives you the way that this shape is so that if i choke up i've got this cool cutout that my thumb rests right into if i'm back i've got this nice almost ramp it doesn't really come up but just enough um it just it ergonomically i adore this knife it feels so good in my hand for its size for being pretty small the thickness and the substantial like the the weightiness and how solid it feels it just makes it feel special to me in hand this feels different than anything else i own in a really welcome and fun way another thing that i love about it the action this knife spidey flicks excellent for me it did right out of the box the closing is not super drop shutty. I imagine if I adjusted it, it could be, I could probably add some lube, but for an out of the box, unadjusted action on a frame lock from Spyderco, in this size, it's really, really good. It's smooth, there's nothing gritty about it. The washers ride great. It is centered perfectly. So good on the centering. It's just really, really well centered. Um, it couldn't be better. The lockup is excellent that lock bar engages fully it's not over traveling it's not under traveling access to the lock bar the way that it's cut i really really like it it's very easy for me to get my finger in there and disengage that bar it's jimped just a tiny bit right there where you press on it so that you know exactly where to press and so that you get the ultimate traction it's excellent and guess what that's the only jimping on the entire knife kudos spider co i'm glad that they didn't jimp it here or here or here or here or here i don't need jimping in any of those places on a knife like this and so the fact that they didn't makes it awesome and here it's i struggle to even call it jimping because i don't feel it with my finger it's not jimping for the sake of traction while you're using the knife it's literally just for disengaging the lock bar which is exactly where jimping should be on this knife that should be the only place and it is so that is awesome this blade shape is also so freaking funky in the coolest way. I love this blade shape. A lot of people have said it looks like a dodo bird. Heck yeah. And I love that. I think it's awesome. It's, I guess you'd call it a sheep's foot. Kind of like a sheep's foot spear point because the belly comes up to meet it. It, it. The shape, the profile of this, I think looks awesome. And I think it's a very usable blade shape. We've got the tiniest i don't know if i would even call that recurve i guess it's a tiny bit of recurve but it's not a recurve i'd be afraid of sharpening so i guess that's worth saying um totally acceptable there and then it's just nice gradual easy belly all the way to the tip the tip is not this isn't going to be like a thrusting stabbing knife but you've got enough tip to pierce into whatever material you're trying to cut and i'm super confident in it the strength out to the tip too is pretty awesome if you look at with how thick this blade stick stock is of course it's going to be a pretty strong tip unless they somehow messed up but it's a great tip i've got no worries about the structural integrity of that tip and then the grind is probably one of my favorite things about this knife i don't really know what the best way to show you the grind on this knife would be but it's hollow ground and it's hollow ground exceptionally well. One of the biggest gripes I've heard about, let's pick the Paysan, because I had a Paysan, and I really liked the Paysan for a lot of reasons, but, sorry, this plane's gonna go over. Let me show you a close-up. Well, the plane goes over, and it's still going. There's a 
the loud plane. Whew. Intermission. This is your snack break. <laughs> All right. The hollow grind on this knife. What was I saying? The Paysan. Sorry. The Paysan is flat ground. And that is a knife that should be hollow ground. Many people have said it before me. I think I said it in my review of it. I didn't hate the grind on the Paysan like some people did, but that knife should have been thinner behind the edge than it was. I, I don't know if you want to call it laziness from Spyderco. I don't know if they thought they were making a wise design choice to add strength to the S90V or what. That knife would be way better served as an EDC knife if it had been hollow ground. It just, it would have made the blade lighter, which that blade is really heavy. It would have made it slice a lot better. And it just, it, in my opinion, it would have made a lot more sense for that knife. This knife, with this thick of blade stock, if they had done a flat saber grind, like started the grind right where they did, but made it a flat grind, this thing would have sucked at cutting. It, there just wouldn't really be a way around that. With how thick this blade stock is, to have a, a grind that short to have done it flat would have been a disservice to this blade. But they hollow ground it. And it, I've felt a few hollow ground knives from Spyderco in my day. This one, it's so... It, they got it so acceptably thin behind the edge. Is this the thinnest knife behind the edge I've, I've ever felt? No, far from it. But... This feels thinner behind the edge than like my PM2 does, which I consider my PM2 a great thinness behind the edge for an EDC knife. This is great. It's really, really well ground with this hollow grind. And I think the hollow grind looks great on it. It just suits the knife to me. It's great. It's really excellent. Um, let's talk pocket clip for a second. The pocket clip is unique to this knife. I don't think Spyderco uses that whole pattern on any other pocket clips that I've, that I'm aware of. It looks really nice to me in terms of how it fits with the, the overall aesthetic of the knife. If you know me, you know that my favorite pocket clips are deep carry clips. I prefer function over form on pocket clips. I don't like generally like milled pretty titanium clips or Timascus clips or anything like that. I like a clip that works really well. This clip is a little shallow, as you can see. You might be worried it's like drunken shallow. It's not. I had a drunken. This pocket clip beats the piss out of a drunken clip. But it could be better. <laughs> this knife would be better in pocket for sure if it had like a normal Spyderco spoon clip. But it wouldn't look as good. It wouldn't feel as special. This is a flash batch knife. So I like that it got its own pocket clip. I imagine... Somebody on the secondary market will make some clips for this, although there's only 1,250 this knife ever, so there probably won't be a ton forever. Like, it's not going to be something you can just go online and buy. Just like this knife, you won't be able to just go online and buy. You might have to have someone make you a clip if this clip bothers you. But this clip, functionally, in my pocket, works great. It's a little tight on thick pants, but even the pants that I'm wearing today are, like, pretty thick chinos. Um, I'm Jake from State Farm in my khakis, if you can see that the this knife goes in and out fine it's very solid retention it is easy to grab it right here kind of by the screws on the butt of the knife it functions fine and it looks good so i'm gonna give it a pass is it my favorite pocket clip no i don't want to sound like i'm just saying this knife is perfection it's not this knife is unique and it's it's not that it's flawed in any way but there's design choices on here that make it not ideal as an EDC knife. If you're looking to buy a EDC knife that's going to be your one knife that does everything for you, I'm never going to recommend this knife. But if you're somebody who likes Spydercos like I do, who digs the design elements that are on here, if you're somebody who just has uh, quite a few knives at this point and you're looking for something fun to get, this knife is so much fun. It's a pickle knife. I mean, I... It makes me happy. It really does. So again, this is my first impressions. I'm going to be doing a full review after I've had a little more time with this, after I've had it in pocket some more. But I'm going to try to get this video up pretty soon, probably tonight. Today is Monday. Um, that way 
as there's more drops coming out, I know people are trying to find information about this knife right now, and I want to put some out there. But I didn't want to make a first impressions video right after I opened it either, because I just don't think that's usually fair to do for most pieces of gear. I've had this knife in pocket on three different pairs of pants now. I've carried it around the house. I've carried it out of the house. I've used it to cut open other packages of knives. I've used it to cut open Amazon packages. I put it through a little bit of cardboard to see how it did with that. It cuts great so far. Um, I will be cutting more with it to keep confirming that, but the grind is well done. The ergos are excellent. The pocket clip is okay. <laughs> um, it's heavy. It's thick. It's different. It feels like a pickle. It looks like a pickle. It's the danger pickle. That's... Those are my first impressions of it. The Danger Pickle is here, and it's great, and I like it. Uh, if you're looking for one, you're probably only looking for one of these because you're already somewhat deep into Spyderco. You pro this will probably not be anyone's first Spyderco who gets one of these. I just really sincerely doubt that it is. And so if you're someone who you're looking at this to be your first Spyderco, I don't think this is the right one to get for your first Spyderco. Would you be mad at it if you got this? No, you'll probably think this is a cool knife. But this is a Spyderco for people who are already into Spyderco, is the best way I can put it. So I'll let that be that for now. My full review will come soon. Be on the lookout for that. But this is the Danger Pickle. And if you can't tell, I love it. I think it's a lot of fun.